Hello and welcome back to the blame game. This week we're gonna do things a little differently. Normally the blame game is supposed to be really high energy and punchy and it focuses solely on gameplay and you know who's at fault for some mistakes that might have happened in the game. But this week we're talking about the C9 and TSM drama, which is not game related. I also have just a lot of thoughts on the situation and rather than try and make it really punchy and drop some of my thoughts, I wanna include all of them, which means this is gonna be more ad lib, more rambly and just sharing that. I'm also gonna reference a lot of stuff uh, that you may or may not have heard before. And normally in the blame, I put all that stuff in there, but here, um, just with how much stuff I'm gonna be talking about, I don't really have time. So if I reference something you're unaware of, I apologize, I just can't make this video an hour long. And hopefully, if you don't know, you can leave a comment and someone else can, can link you what I'm talking about. Normally I record these live on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Mark Z, uh, but I was waiting for the C9 video this week before I made anything. So here we are. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's get into it. I'll be trying to give some perspective on the rationale that teams might have had for their changes to make it seem more reasonable for fans who are unsatisfied with the answers they've gotten from their org so far. And I also want to dive into why fans might be feeling that way in a little bit as well. But first, let's just kind of talk about some of the, the changes that they made. So for TSM, it was very early on to the season. They already swapped somebody out. It's a development roster, all these reasons. But if your team is not progressing and there's a couple significant sticking points that are stopping them from getting better, you can't just pretend that they don't exist. A fire will not put itself out until it's burned everything down. So they probably felt like they needed to make a change. And I think you can speculate on what that might have been watching Shen Yi's champion queue, as well as the leaked video of um, his conversation with a friend where they're talking about his shot calling a fair amount. He's very, very vocal um, to the point where you could argue it might be too much. Who can say? But let's say it is an issue for the other members of the team, multiple members of the team, potentially maybe the three ones who speak English. I don't have any particular insight into the situation, but just saying this could be a problem that they ran into, right? What are you gonna do if the team is frustrated scrims? It's this issue that you keep coming back to time and time again. Shen Yi's not gonna change. The players don't like this. What do you do? Do you change out three members of your team or do you potentially try swapping one out, getting some footing underneath you, get some momentum, reintroduce them back into the team potentially in the future? I can understand why the team felt like they needed to do something, it was especially the fact that they were getting slammed on stage. And from what I heard behind the scenes, scrims were not any better either. And that's why I tweeted that because this was not like just a stage under performance. It was also the team was really struggling. So I can understand why they made the changes they felt they needed to make. I don't want this to make it sound like I'm blaming fans though, because fans got pretty big tonal whiplash from the org about how their development roster, multiple members of the team, the fans seemed pretty down to say, oh yeah, we're learning, we'll improve, this is fine. They bought into that messaging and then ultimately it was the org who was the one who flip-flopped first. So it is understandable why they had to do that. The messaging itself wasn't good either, where if you read that initial tweet, it sounds like shh, it was more about Yurisan and Shen Yi was potentially pulling double duty between Academy and LCS and it later had to be clarified again that the entire messaging around this has, I can understand, left fans frustrated. Wardrobe change. If you ever see me in this outfit, it's just because these are pickups that I record a little bit later since the other one was more ranty and rambly. So uh, I just didn't, I missed a couple points. Honestly, the community itself does a better job of trying to break this news, both with the translation of the leaked Shen Yi conversation that was floating around for a while, as well as taking snippets of information from all over the different sources of people who have done vague tweeting about what's going on. Not only that, and since then, there hasn't really been much clarity given on how the decision was reached. And, you know, like my speculation might be right, who knows, but also what the plan is moving forward is you're on the new starter. Will Shen Yi be reintroduced? Tactical's interview sounds like your Sam might be the play going forward, but we don't really know. The thing that some of these orgs seem to be forgetting is that it's kind of human nature that if something happens that you don't like, you blame the person or org or faceless thing that has made that thing happen. And you don't usually try to see their side. It's very easy when someone does something you don't like to write them off as incompetent or bad or evil or whatever it is. When something goes wrong in the world, this is not even about fans. This is just human nature. You know, if someone cuts you off on the highway, you assume that person's a effing idiot, you know, like you, you try not to like, well, maybe, you know, like a cat was in his car and his cat did something, you know, like you don't really try and understand, you just go, bah, F that guy. And so when orgs make strange decisions and they don't give fans any reason to understand where they're coming from with those decisions, a lot of people just naturally assume the worst of the situation. And this applies as just as well to the C9 one, which we'll get into in a minute. I'd say that this issue was exacerbated by Dominic coming on Hotline League. I didn't really push him on that show because I don't have a personal relationship with him and Travis does. And Travis was the one, as you could see, who was trying to pull a little bit more out of him. But it was pretty much a stonewall PR response for most things. 
some of these things that he was asking as well were basic understanding of how the team is working. And by hiding those behind PR answers, it made it even more suspicious, it felt like, than just giving an answer. And it makes it sound like things are even worse potentially behind the scenes. There were basic questions about like, well, what's the plan with Shen Yi moving forward? I think there's a tactful way to leave that up in the air while still feeling like you're giving fans some insight on the things you're looking for in the future, even if you're not actually going to commit to any of them. It's the same thing with who's making the decisions. You know, is it coaching? Is it the players? Is it this kind of stuff? Uh, you know, fans just kind of want to know these things and you not being able to say for sure that your head coach is leading the team makes it sound even weirder to me. Dominic seemed to feel like he was outing the person making the decisions, but coaching is a public job, TSM of all teams. I mean, everyone knows that you're going to be under some scrutiny when you take on these jobs. And the concern that by saying what's kind of going on, you're giving people targets for fans to, to hate on. Well, that's just really kind of enabling the asshole fans who go too far and not respecting the rational fans who just want to know what's happening and connect with the team still. Yes, fan bases absolutely can go too far and say things they should not say, but plenty of people do that regardless of how you handle the situation. The job of good PR is to try to limit the problem people while making the people who are just your regular fans happy. And I feel like the regular fans are being given nothing right now. Trust the process kind of PR to me is pretty bad at getting fans to actually buy in. It's just telling them to blindly believe in you and not giving them anything to work with. Hopefully by the time this blame game comes out, TSM Legends has also come out and uh, fixed some of these concerns. And it was just a problem of Dom coming on Hotline League before the messaging was really ready. And it's not going to continue on into the next week of the LCS. On to Cloud9. Their video did come out this week. And it was also pretty poorly received for a lot of PR responses with very little clarity into the actual situation. And the fans <laughs> very much let that be known. Uh, we'll dig into that part as well in the second half. But first, I want to help people try to read between the lines and get some clarity on what is going on in the situation. But before I do that, I want to say that we will never know exactly where the blame lies. I know this is the blame game, but depending on how contract negotiations and expectation setting went in the preliminary stages, it could be C9 or the org's fault or it could be LS's. To stitch this together, you're going to need to have watched the Cloud9 video, the Max Waldo interview, the Fudge interview, as well as Doug around in Reddit comments for things that Vigar said during live watch parties that fans are now reciting. Assuming that no one is outright lying here, the system and role issues really do seem to be the root cause of the problems. The Vigar V2 comments talking about how a head coach has to deal with like players getting headaches potentially, obviously a bit of a hyperbole about how you are ultimately going to need to make sure your players are performing regardless of whether the problems they're facing are game related or even necessarily relevant or immature potentially. Uh, and then there's also how you address those players. You can't just tell them, hey, pick this no matter what. And if you don't like my data, forget it. Um, Max also talked about how stepping into the head coaching role, he's now taking on more responsibilities that are not really game related, delegating, all these kinds of things. Fudge said that in his interview, he could see it coming and that it's probably the best thing for both, pa both parties going forward. And so I think it's assuming that no one's lying here, and I don't think anyone is, they're just trying to tiptoe around saying what went wrong exactly, that there was some disagreement on what LS was supposed to be doing at, at Cloud9. The reason that head coaching can't just be often game related is because players and other people in the org look to you as a leader. And a lot of the times the things that you would say, oh, well, they should have given that to a team psychologist to deal with or a team manager. It doesn't quite work as well when the things that are starting to cause these issues come from gameplay related things. I'll give you an example just to consider. I, this, I have no idea if this happened or not. This is just something that I have encountered during my time coaching. Um, let's say that you're talking to your jungler and he's upset that your top laner seems to die all the time when he's on the weak side. And you know, the conversation's like, dude, I'm so frustrated every time that we leave him alone up there, he's dying to enemy ganks, which puts pressure on me because now that I'm on the strong side, I need to go make something happen on the flip side of the map or we're falling behind. And it happens literally every game. The person's not focused, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you have that rant at a sports psychologist or someone who doesn't have game expertise and game understanding, they might say, oh, well, you know, try and just rein it in, yada, yada, yada. But you don't feel any better because you feel like they might not actually understand why it's frustrating to you. A head coach might be able to say strategically, yes, that is very frustrating, but also our warding has been really bad this week. We're not giving our top laner any advance notice of where the jungler might be. And he's just having to sack wave after wave if we don't start warding better around the mid lane or something. Like you can start addressing the player's concerns on a level that 
other roles within the organization cannot really do. And I think that's one of the reasons that people who have tried to bring in head coaches from other places have ultimately failed in the League of Legends scene because it's such a struggle to connect with the players feelings if you can't understand the game that's causing them. Being a head coach sometimes is not fun. I think back to that time where Peanut was streaming drunk on, you know, turned it on at like five o'clock in the morning or something. And Koma got up, ran through Korea in the middle of the night, running like to get to his house and told him to stop streaming and took care of him. Listen, people are dumb and players are people. Everyone's dumb sometimes. And unfortunately, as a head coach, oftentimes your responsibilities are to stop people and your players from being dumb when they're being dumb. It's not fun. That is one of the reasons I quit coaching. I've been offered triple my salary basically to go back to be a coach for a team. And I turned it down because of these kinds of reasons. I don't wanna have to do these kinds of things that I think ultimately is the head coach's responsibility. In a smaller scene like League of Legends as well, compared to like the NFL, where there's more support systems in place, the head coach has to take on even more of those kinds of responsibilities, unfortunately. However, I don't want this to sound like I'm blaming LS because we do not have nearly enough information to know one, if my theorizing is 100% true, but also, whose fault it really is because LS could have easily said in the contract negotiations, I'm not going to do any of that. You better have a manager ready. I'm game focused. I'm only leading the team on the game stuff. That's the stuff I'm going to head coach for. You have to find other people to pick up those responsibilities. And, and they're the ones who are going to deal with that. And maybe Jack agreed and just totally flip flopped once he got here. Or another angle is that neither are really at fault. They tried to make that system work, but then ultimately people, you know, when they try to make it go, they wanted LS to take on more responsibilities and LS stood his ground and he said, no, I told you what the deal was and that was why he was let go. We have no idea, unfortunately. It's even possible that the players were involved with this kind of decision, given that Fudge said that he could see it coming. Jack worded something very strangely to me. He said, I want to make it very important to note that all the players and management and staff were aware of the frustrations. That didn't make it sound like they agreed. I don't know why he phrased it that way, as opposed to trying to say like a little stronger that not just that they were aware, but they sympathize with, with the frustrations. You know, like the fact that they're just aware makes it sound like it could still just be an upper management down decision, which potentially it was, but I don't know why you included that sentence if that was the case. It sounded like he wanted to say the whole team was on the same page, but then he also didn't say the whole team was on the same page. So again, these teams are not having super clear messaging. And so I don't blame fans for not picking up on potentially what's going on here. And that's really where I wanna focus the rest of this blame game on. And it's probably the most important thing for everyone to consider is why fans are upset so much at what's going on with these orgs right now. It's not just a lack of clarity and explanation, though that's obviously a part of it, but it's the clear PR talk where the tiptoeing around what's going on isn't just hiding answers, it's hiding emotion. If you watch that video, did you connect with it on any emotional level from what Jack was saying or what Dominic on Hotline League was saying? You know, people don't just want information. They want to be able to care about these teams and players and brands that they're investing their life into. They're choosing to watch this kind of stuff. It's the reason that every single you know, brand that is consumer driven on Twitter has gone from sounding like some conglomerate of people to like, oh, a real person might have tweeted this because they're trying to connect with people. Corporate PR talk doesn't just hide answers. It turns it into a nameless, faceless, gray blob of non-existent emotion. It's one thing I'll absolutely give Nate Shot credit for on 100 Thieves is even when he doesn't give good information, you can tell that person has an emotion and they feel strongly and they rarely care. If there's one thing that these orgs need to work on in their messaging, it isn't necessarily just giving fans better information, but how to mean something while you tell them that they can't share it with you. However, my criticism does not just stop at the orgs. Fans in other scenes often get this information through other means, all right? I Googled the most random NFL firing from this year, the most recent one that just happened, some Football coach from the Texans, I think it was, got fired. And if you just Google his name and firing, you'll find a slew of articles from journalists saying, sources say these are some reasons. And the journalists are providing 
some context that the teams might not give in their press conferences that they are the ones putting out. This lack of coverage has a knock-on problem as well for interviewers and journalists who want to do features on the players because you can't just stick a microphone in front of their face and ask what their thoughts are. Like what happens in this example where the player is saying that he thinks his coach got a raw deal and you're getting some honesty out of the people involved in the situation. I'm sure a lot of people in the league scene have heard sources about what's gone on and could have put out a report like you see about this NFL firing, but everyone here is just totally hands off. And I'm not just stopping at journalists either. I'm looking at you content creators, myself in the second monitor here. Look at the opinion pieces that are coming out about this random NFL firing. People have actually strong opinions about whether it was good, bad, stupid, or whatever. Our entire scene is just sitting back and saying, well, we don't have all the details. We can't speculate. We can't comment on it. We just, you know, don't don't flame people. It was maybe the best. And they, they people seem so afraid to have an opinion right now. We're so chicken shit when there's big brands involved, all right? The entire ecosystem of how information flows in traditional sports media is broken right now in the LCS. Normally, orgs often do kind of give a bland response. Maybe it's a press conference and you get some moments of honesty from the people involved in those situations, but they're often not that great. But then behind the scenes, they'll leak this information to people like reporters who can then say, sources close to the team say, blah, blah, blah are the issues. And then people like me who are wanting to be more pundits and analysts can give their expert opinion and expertise and give their own thoughts and have takes about it. And other journalists can then use that in interviews and things like that to press other people into like, well, someone else said this. Do you have any confirmation? You know, you have this whole chain of information that works its way up and fans get to consume that and get information. But here, none of that's happening and fans are the ones who are suffering for it. I can understand why fans are frustrated when the entire ecosystem of how news is supposed to work in professional sports media is just not happening right now. I have an idea of what happened. I've heard a couple stories. I assume tons of people had, and yet I think it's pretty obvious why people are scared right now to potentially leak something, despite the fact that there have been leaks. Like people have heard some of the stuff that's gone on behind the scenes in some of these situations. It's definitely more frustrating for fans, but I hope you can understand why it's frustrating for me, who's just waiting for this information to come out and then trying to comment on it, but it's just not happening. And so I kind of know what's going on and I can either pretend I don't and just lie and potentially misdirect people or I basically leak or I try and like just push people in the right direction without really saying anything important. And so it's it's equally frustrating, it feels like, for a lot of the pundits and content creators that the news flow just isn't working the way it works in traditional sports right now. My whole point with all this is that it doesn't really matter who we're blaming. It doesn't need to be the players, it doesn't need to be the coaches, and it doesn't need to be the organizations. The whole point is that this is an entertainment product and we need to give people a reason to care. We asked at the start of the season for them to buy in on the LS project or the LDL talent project. And then we killed those projects partway through the year with no explanation. And it's hard to get people to care about something by ignoring them. If you're a fan watching this video and you think I didn't do a good job, you should be upset at me. That's fine. Like we're supposed to entertain you guys. And if we're just not doing that, Of course you're going to be disinterested and upset. Anyways, I got to fuck off right now. I got to call an Uber. This is on Wednesday morning before I do the dive. So I got to go do the dive. I'm sorry I can do the typical outro. Regular Blame Game will be back. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this slightly different take. Well, LCS has officially kicked off. And I know what you're concerned about. And that's just performance. How will North America perform? It's all about perform, perform, perform. Well, listen. I can tell you one great way to get an amazing performance And that's with an Alienware computer. Yes, you can get the new Auroras available on Alienware.com slash Travis. Or why don't you get a great notebook from them, maybe an M15 or X17 at Alienware.com slash Travis. They have great performance as well. And so who cares about how we perform this year when you've got the performance you need from Alienware?